So in this particular video, we're gonna look at a way in which you can log changes into a database table inside your Sudabase database when your users are changing data with inside their application. So a typical use case of this might be that you just want to keep track of the changes that's happening, whether someone's inserting, deleting, or updating data. It's always good to contain an audit of those particular changes. And that's what we're gonna get involved in in this particular video. It's a little bit more of a low code video. Hopefully you enjoy it. Let's get cracking. Okay, so let's have a little walkthrough then on what we're gonna cover in this particular video. So here we have on the left-hand side, our Flutterflow application. Now that could be any of your applications. This one is the goals tracking app from a recent series I have on my channel. If you'd like to learn how to build that application, please do check the link in the description. So we're gonna do all the typical things that we would do in that particular application. We're gonna do your usual sort of create, read, update of data. And of course, what's then gonna happen is we're gonna then find that Flutterflow will do its regular kind of API call behind the scenes. And then what'll happen is, is we'll We'll move into then the super base side we'll then work out what are we actually making a change to so this could be um, a particular table we could be doing a delete or an update or something like that and what will happen is is we'll then invoke a trigger which will then ultimately call a super base function and it's that function that's going to do all of the magic work for us now this is a reusable function and you can apply this to any table with inside your super base database there we go. And then on the final step is then going to log those particular changes into your Superbase table. So that sounds a lot, but actually it's quite straightforward of a little bit of low code. And I'll walk you through the kind of the actual creation of all of these steps. And then you'll be up and running in no time with inside your application. So let's now get onto that. And I'll do a quick demo first before we actually get into then the meat of the video. Okay, so here we are then in run mode in Flutterflow. If I sign into this particular application here, I've got the goals on the screen at the moment. Let's create a brand new goal, hit the plus. Let's just call this one a test goal like that and just give this one a test description, something like that. Just hit create goal. So the new record is created at the top there. If I just hold my left mouse button down, let's just type in here, updated goal, something like that, hit update. And finally, what I'll do is I'll just then delete the actual goal itself and that's now gone. Let's now head over to Superbase and let's see what has been logged in our logs table. Okay, so in Superbase then, on the left-hand side, you can see I've got a number of tables. I've got my goals and I've got my task table. Don't too, don't worry too much about this view here. And then I've got the logs there. As you can see here, I've got some goals here. Um, the one that I started with three and I've, I'm still, I've got three here because we deleted the one that we created earlier. But if I move over to my logs table, you're gonna then see a number of entries in here. So you can see some timestamps there of when this and these rows were created. The user ID, now of course I'm authenticated with inside our Flutterflow applications, of course, I'm tracking the user ID that has actually made that particular change. You can see here the table um, in which one has been updated and there are my operations. And what I've got here is I've got the old data and the new data. And you can see here that they're stored as JSON kind of representations. Um, so I'm using particular uh, a JSON B data type here. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that very, very shortly, but you can see here that I'm tracking those changes. Now, if I wanted to here, I could then go in here, I can sort of parse, I can then look or do whatever kind of work that I need to do within that data. But the key thing is that I'm actually logging that data now with inside this particular application. So that is the kind of like the, the setup. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna delete everything that I've got in here and we're gonna recreate it from scratch in this particular video. And of course, we're gonna get our hands dirty with a little bit of low code as well. So, but I'll talk through, I'll take it nice and steady. I'll talk through what I'm actually doing there. So hopefully it'll give a little bit of context. Certainly if you are not particularly familiar with kind of creating functions or anything like that in Superbase, I'll talk through the key bits on screen as we're sort of going Going through. So let's move into that now. Okay, so if we're going to log changes to the database that we need to store them somewhere, so let's first create our tables. Hit the create table. Now we're going to call this one logs. We're going to turn off a row level security for now. We're not going to confuse ourselves with implementing that on this particular table. Now down in our data types is where we now need to add our columns in. So the first one that we're going to create is a UUID. Now this is going to store the actual ID of the user. So that's going to be of type text. The next one we're going to do is we're going to call this one a table name is going to track the table that is actually having the change. So just put text in there. The next one we're going to do is then operation. So we can determine what our users are actually doing. Again, this is now another text. And then the next one we're going to then create is then of course our old data. So if I'm just going to type in, in fact, I'm just going to 
change this to old data like that. And then this is going to be of type JSON B. Now, uh, just for your information and what kind of JSON B means. So we've got two uh, sort of data types of inside Superbase. One is called JSON B and one is called JSON. So if you are looking just to kind of preserve the formatting of kind of uh, of JSON string data with inside Superbase, then JSON data type would be your preferred approach. If you were trying to uh, maybe uh, optimize the JSON content that you've actually got uh, stored of inside your table. So for example, you wanted to sort of carry out some sort of indexing or searching or something like that with inside uh, your actual data, then a JSON uh, B uh, data type will be more preferred because that, that kind of removes all of its formatting. It will be a very, very tight document with inside that particular row. So we're going to use JSON B here. We're not going to be doing any optimizations on this particular data type, but just bear that one for the future, depending on what your use case is. So let's add another column in here. Let's add then a new data like that. And that is also going to be there for JSON B. So let's just scroll down. Let's just choose that JSON B. There it is. So that's pretty well much it for our table. You can see here we've got the created timestamp here. So we'll certainly know when that has been created and that should be all that we need. If I just hit the save here, then our database sort of table will now be created. There it goes. It's just there now. So pretty empty and pretty raw. So let's now move on to then the creation of the actual function itself. OK, then, so here we are then with inside the Superbase SQL editor. Just hit the left hand side here, hit new query, and this is what you will see. Let's now go through line by line on how we're going to create this particular trigger function. I won't type it out by hand. I'll go through line by line. Then it'll save you from listening to my keyboard type as we go through it. So the first thing that we're going to do then is we're going to actually create or replace the actual function itself. So the great thing about this particular part of this function is that we can run this every time of inside the SQL editor. And if we want to make some changes to it, then it will replace if something is already there. Now we're going to call this one log table changes. And of course you can change that to whatever name that you need. So this is now defined that this is actually going to be a trigger function. And then everything with inside a function, it starts for begin and also has an end as well. So this is the bits that's going to work in the middle. So the first thing that we're going to do then is we're going to look at the actual operation. This is kind of like the TG underscore op is kind of like a very variable that's available to us within inside Superbase that will then allow us to determine what type of database operation is actually happening at this particular time. And as you can see there, we're doing a delete. Now, when we have a delete, we then need to then think about, okay, well, what are we then going to insert into our logs table. Well, we want to pretty well much store the user ID, the table name, the operation, the old data, new data. These are all of the columns that we created for our table. So we're going to insert into this particular table. But of course, the values are going to be then the current setting, which what we're doing here is we're using a special kind of like a function within inside uh, Superbase itself that's going to kind of get hold of us the actual user ID from the JWT token. Now, if you remember, I was signed into my particular application. And of course, there was a, a token interchange between your Flutterflow application and then also Superbase itself. So this kind of this JWT token is going to be passed between Flutterflow and Superbase. And this kind of convenience function will allow me to sort of grab hold of that, uh, that, that, that ID of our user. And I want to install, I want to kind of store that with inside the UUID kind of column then with inside my uh, database row. So then the next thing is we want to store the table name. We saw that within our sample. We saw the table name being stored. The actual operation again, so we're here in this particular example here, you're going to have the delete will be will be stored then with inside this particular um, operation column here. And then, of course, we then need to use this convenience kind of function with inside Superbase. It's going to take our old database record and we're going to want to then convert that into a JSON kind of document, which is then stored with inside the old data column. Now, of course, this is a deletion, so we're not going to store any new data because there's no new data to go in there. And then once we've got that, we're going to close off our kind of our insert there, the values, and that is all going to be good. Next up, there's this then next block. So we're going to say if we are now doing an update, then we're going to go through a very, very similar process. We're going to insert into our table row there. Here's all of the same column names again. And the values that we're going to be passing in is then going to be the same where it says current setting. And we're going to pull out that user ID. And I just want to point out here. Here, actually, one thing I didn't mention just a moment ago is that um, it's worth doing a little bit of research on what this actual function does, because here we're making the assumption that we're always going to be passing in 
in the kind of the user ID as part of the token here. And that's why it says true. Of course, if we didn't, if we didn't have this as a token coming in, then this is likely to throw an error of inside Superbase. If you set that to false, then it means that then that would then become null and then we wouldn't have an error thrown. So in the next line, of course, the table name is going to come in. We've then got the table uh, operation again. So this is going to be kind of the update again. And then we're going to do the row to JSON, which is going to be the old uh, database record. And then here we've then got the uh, the new database record that is going to be created as well. So we're storing both old and new within inside the logs table. And then we're going to close that off. And then we're going to move on then to the insert. Very, very similar. Once again, we're going to insert into the actual table, the values. And then we've kind of got the setting that's going to go in there as well. There's the table name. There's the operation, which will be an insert in this example. Now, of course, this is an insert. There's no old data to come in. So, of course, this is going to be null to start off with. And then, of course, we've then got the new record that's going to have the row to JSON at that point. Close it off. And then this is where we kind of then finalize out the actual trigger function itself um, with typical uh, sort of uh, sort of syntax with inside a Postgres database. So that's pretty well much it. So now we've got all of that now sort of set up and you kind of understand a little bit about what's going on. We can now select all of this, of course, and then we can hit the run selected down here. And you'll see now that I've got this success, no errors returned here. So what that means now is that our function is now being created. So if we move over here to the left hand, so I go to databases, we go to functions, and then you'll see here now that we've got the log table change function that's now been uh, sort of created. You can see here there's a trigger type. If we wanted to, of course, we could come here and we could then hit the delete option if we wanted to delete that particular function. But of course, the great thing is, is we could go back to the SQL editor if we wanted to. We could make a change here. We could select this again. And because we're doing a create or replace, run the selected, we'll then sort of overwrite the function then with the new update. So that's pretty well much it. That is the function that's, that has been created. We now need to work out, well, how do we actually then trigger this and how what do we need to do to do that so we're going to move into that section right now okay so back in the sql editor then this is a brand new query let's now create the actual trigger itself so what the first thing that we need to do is we need to do something very similar we did with the actual functions we're going to create or replace the actual trigger now i've given this a kind of a, a specific name now this is going to be specifically for my table called goals now of course feel free to change that in your own use case in your own project and then next up of course we then need to then determine well what do we actually want to do we want to trigger on an insert or an update or a delete now, of course, you can, if you would like, I mean, you only want to tr sort of log on deletions or something like that, then of course you can then remove kind of these out of here if that's what you actually want and just leave the delete there as well. And here, of course, is my table name, super important. Of course, you're gonna want to probably put more triggers on multiple number of tables. In this particular simple sample, we're just gonna focus on the actual goals table itself. Next up, we then need to say for each then row, execute the particular function. Now, of course, this is the key one here. This is going to execute this particular universal kind of function that we've created. And remember, you can reuse this for whatever you would like in across your application. So, of course, you're just going to create multiple of these. So if I had my task, for example, then, of course, I would then say log changes. And I would say, say, my task table and then put tasks in there. And, of course, I've then got two two uh, kind of setups there. And I, what all I then simply need to do is I can then just select this one here. I can then run the selected and you can see I've got that success, uh, success no uh, road return that doesn't indicate any errors at all. And if I wanted to, I could also do that on the task as well. Hit run selected and then that's also set up. You can then head then obviously over to the database itself and then you can then actually have a look at your triggers here. Now we've got a couple of triggers here that we created with inside the kind of the full kind of application build here. But here are our new ones here. So I'm logging both goals and tasks. And here are my particular statements that are, are being kind of well the operations that's actually happening with inside my table. So that's pretty well much it. That's everything set up. So what we can now do is go back to the Flutterflow application. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to fire it back up again and I'm also going to then check to see if the tasks also get logged with inside the table as well. So let's go and do that now. Okay, so let's make a change then to this particular goal here. Let's um, let's just put a different title in here. Drink even more water, update the goal. Let's go into the actual goal itself. Let's create some tasks. So I'm just going to put test task one like that. Just put a bit of rubbish in there. Let's create a brand new task in here. Test task two. There we go. Let's say mark this one here as done. Let's move back here. And you can see now that um, I've got 50% now more increased in here. So let's go now go back to Superbase and let's see if that's been logged. 
So let's move over to the tables themselves, go to the logs, and let's see what we've got. So yeah, it looks like there's a lot going on here. We've got some updates, some inserts going on. Now, of course, this is a brand new table, so there's no data in here before. So you can see now we've got all of these particular changes and I can kind of just double click here and you can then see the sort of the, the kind of adjacent representation there of the actual change that was made. And this obviously is the old data. And of course, this is then the new data that it was then sort of changed to. So um, that's pretty well much then all this uh, set up for this particular sample. Now, just a, a few pointers to mention is that you can imagine that over some period of time here that this particular table could get quite large. So you want to think about your optimizations, think about the type of the amount of data that you are actually storing in this particular table. You want to be sort of conscious of that because, of course, you're using cloud-based services, of course, and uh, sizes are going to increase, which ultimately will mean that um, the cost will increase as well. So you want to probably have um, some maybe some functions on here that kind of reduce maybe the table size. You might want to be only logging for maybe t sort of 20 or 30 days. Again, it really depends depends on your use case there. So just be conscious of that as well. So you want to make sure you optimize it. And if you're querying on this, of course, you want to make sure you've got all the right indexes applied and all that kind of stuff. So there we go. That's it for this particular video. Please do check the link in the description because you can capture the code there and then move into your own projects really, really easily. If you're watching this on YouTube, please do subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber and please do like the video as well. If you are not a member of the Digital Pros at No Code Academy, again, please do check the link in the description. It'd be fantastic if you'd have a, you part of the No Code community as well lots of like-minded individuals there who are enjoying the no-code space and obviously learning along the way as well. So um, hopefully I'll see you in the next video.